Good morning. It's Thursday, March 12, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, So, What Would Jesus Do? And our scripture is Matthew chapter 19. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with this question. Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? Haven't you read the scriptures, Jesus replied? They record that from the beginning God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Then why did Moses say in the law that a man could give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away, they asked. Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts, but it was not what God had originally intended. The Pharisees were very interested in God. They were more interested in keeping what they'd inherited, power. By keeping a status quo, they could control any situation and maintain their position as keepers of Moses' law. They were committed to keeping their place as revered teachers and leaders. This was the good old boy system, and they preferred it over anything Jesus was teaching. So they played the trap in this chess game of who's got the power. They asked Jesus one of those, have you stopped beating your wife yet, questions. Whether Jesus answered yes or no, he was in trouble with one of two groups. There were those who liked having the power of divorce as a threat held over a woman's future pitted against the less powerful. The Pharisees were employing a divide-and-conquer strategy. And Jesus' answer didn't sidestep the question. Rather, it blew the question apart exposing the selfish prejudice of the Pharisees as well as their ignorance of the God they claim to serve. I see this kind of scenario emerging more clearly in the woes of the battle lines drawn in the United Methodist Church and the larger Western culture over the issues of control with homosexuality as the pawn. Depending on your point of view, there are somewhere between 10 and 40 million plans before General Conference of the United Methodist Church in May. Depending on the outcome, the church will or will not divide formally. In an email article I read last weekend, the battle lines drawn are gathering forces. And there's a lot at stake. That is, if you count prestige, status, bragging rights, and money as anything of value. I rather sense that God is not wringing his hands in heaven, and there's no perspiration on God's upper lip. Whatever Methodists decide to divide, God's kingdom is going to survive. The ones I fear for are those power brokers who have decided to grab for the brass ring. Such power moves are wholly related to, as Jesus described in his row with the Pharisees, hardness of heart. One of the UMC bishops has submitted another plan, the 2 by 4 plan, a rather unfortunate choice of name, evoking an image in my mind of a less than peaceful resolution process, more of a wooden bludgeon methodology. Call it a new form of unity or whatever you will, you cannot force or demand unity. Unity is a hard thing, never legislated, especially by heated debates. The Pharisees were good at debating the law. That was their stock and trade. Experts at manipulating a statement here and there, a scripture slightly twisted to fit their agenda, or even a witness paid to turn a blind eye or betray with a kiss. In the end, all history books will be edited or burned by he who planned and is executing his purposes for all persons. So it will not alter the line between sheep and goats on that final day, no matter what United Methodists do in the near future, except for those who lose their sense of humility and bent towards God's spirit in the religious grab-all-you-can contest. For you today, as alluded to previously, there is no wringing of hands in heaven. But if you listen below, you can pick up the sounds of some serious laughter. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.